Right, painted the barn owl, but I got the barn owl from a magazine. Um, because it's very rare I see a barn owl flying, and I wanted one that was flying. But I'm going to show you how to paint grass. So I'll put my barn owl in. So I'll show you how to paint it the simple way. Now that I put my barn owl in, there's my barn owl. And we put in with the clouds. Turn it upside down. And this is called, this brush is called a quill. Now I've got quite a few quills. Um, I think that's my best one. Oh no, that's my best one actually. But then again, no, that's the biggest one. So we'll use that one. So yeah, we need a quill. So we put the quill in the water. Give it a good few washies. This is yellow ochre. So we put the yellow ochre on there. Give it a little wash. And while you're doing that, do this with your brush because it makes the brush fan out like that. Okay, so we get it quite wet. And then we do we do this motion with it. Because with barn owls they fly over fields, don't they? And some, most of the time they're over a kind of a yellow ochre cornfield or you know they're over farmers fields. Well I've seen them anyway doing that. But I can never capture one on film or camera. They're very quick. And the barn owls are the silent silent type of bird. It's getting some kind of uh, look, isn't it? It's actually a ceramic quill that you use for ceramics. So you could buy one from a um, well-known ceramic shop that sell quills, and they come they come in the form of I don't know if that will come off. No, I've, I've taped them all on, but they're not, they're not actually, there you go, that's a quill, okay, and you have to find, find another old brush to put it on, so you've got a quill. Really what we're looking for is these these bits here on the end that are sticking up. These there, because that's, that's where it's flying over, so we'll turn it back over. See, because it looks looks like a field, doesn't it? And then I'm going to mix a darker colour because with watercolours you start light and then you go dark. So we'll get a brown. I always use a separate brush as well for mixing, which you don't use at all. But I just, it's just it's really rubbish brush. But I never put my other brushes in the other colours because because of. Cause of um, contaminating them with different colours. I like them clean. So I'll add a black and a brown, burnt sienna and a black. And then we start off at the bottom because this is closer to you.
See with the quill it's actually using the ends like airs, can you see them? Like that. That's what's giving you the, the effect without taking a long time doing it. The quill does it all for you. It doesn't, ma doesn't matter where you put them either, just keep playing with it. Now I'm, I'm going back into the aloe oak now, do it a bit darker. And I'm just going to add a few at the top. And you can you can put your brush to the side like that as well and do a few long lines. It's all a trick of the brush really. Now what I'd say is a carpenter can't do his job without good tools, can he? Without doing, getting the right tools for the woodwork. Now, when you do watercolours, get the right paper, the right tools for the job, and it's a lot easier for you to learn. If you get really rubbish paper and it turn, your watercolour turns out really bad, and you wonder why, it might be the fact that you've got really bad paper. Get the right paints, the right brushes. Well, this isn't your normal watercolour brush. This is something I've found out through experience uh, of experimenting. So basically that's it, it's finished.